one of the Come On Yarns podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, spinning, sometimes crochet, sometimes dyeing but always fibre based fortnightly podcast. Now I say fortnightly but it was only last weekend that I did my last podcast but I've had, I've had this week off work so I've had a little bit more time and thought I would hop on to give you a podcast because the next two weeks are going to be pretty busy as I get back to work. So yes, uh, hello, hello. It is Saturday the 10th of April and if you are a new viewer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are a regular or a returning viewer, thank you so, so much as always for coming back and spending some time with me today. Um, yes, parish notices. So you can find me as Calon Yarns on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter to all those social media places and if you can take a moment to click the like button or the subscribe button that would be really really helpful helpful and helps me to build this community here so what do I have in store for you today well I do have the kitchen tour those of you that have been here for a while know that we have had six months of drama while we've had a new kitchen fitted building work done remodeling however you want to phrase it so uh, yes I'm gonna I've got a little bit of a, a footage of a tour of that at the end I've also got um, some progress on a work in progress I've also got a finished object that I forgot to tell you about last week and quite a bit of spinning bits of bobs to show you saying that I think I've just inhaled an immense amount of fibre it is chaos here under the camera chaos on my little table of dreams so yes bear with me um, so what to begin with so my finished object this week was something that I made as I was longing for my kitchen to be done and dusted so I decided to make myself a little tea cosy. Um, and I know I was nearly finished when I last showed you this, so I just wanted to show you the finished blocked item. And I am very, very pleased with it. Uh, it's come out really well, and yeah, that's pretty a good, accurate um, representation of the colour, actually. So it is a, a colour work design that I found in the... Um, uh, what's it called? alternate stitch dictionary if you haven't had a look at this book before it is really really great so this is the alternate stitch dictionary and it gives you lots and lots of different color work stitch patterns um, it's published by interweave magazine <clears throat> and andrea Rangel, i believe is the the author's name but there's some really really great patterns in here very very different um uh different from the traditional ones there's a few full patterns but as you can see on the front cover there's kind of bikes and leaves and different uh, patterns to the more traditional kind of peary flowers or the the selby patterns etc so worth an invest if you are a color work person um yeah so i chose a little design that represented some of our the patterns in our tiles and made a little tea cozy it is lined uh, and it is out of some jameson and smith that i had in stock in stock I see I think of myself as a little a little shop here uh, that's how I kind of you know uh, what's the word um, pretend that my my stash is stock yeah you know uh, out of stash Jameson and Smith out of stash uh, and I did a little eye cord with a twist for a little loop and this is for um, like a single teapot so that's worked really really well uh, and has had some use already so I forgot to tell you about that last week but that's tucked away in my drawer in the kitchen so that's my finished object for this week um, my work in progress has given me some joy over the last few days and it's been, uh, even though I've had a week from, off from work and I thought and I would hope that I would get lots of knitting and spinning in but of course because we just had the kitchen completed the last few weeks has really been taken up with, last few days rather, has been taken up with getting stuff out of storage and wiping down surfaces, washing stuff, finding out where it's going to go, so much so that I seem to now no longer have a fingerprint um, to be able to open my phone. I have to use my passcode all the time. So I've done so much scrubbing and cleaning that I have no fingerprints anymore. So 
building on my um, theme of security measures from last week and buckets of water. Um, another tip from the top that if you are a burglar and you don't want to leave any fingerprints then all you need to do is do some pretty heavy duty cleaning and then they just disappear so that's good to, good to know, good life hack there. Well, yes, so not so much knitting and spinning done as hoped and dreamed yet the kitchen has uh, stuff in it now. Woohoo! Um, so yeah, is the camera flashing at me? No, it's okay, it's fine. So yes, progress on my Zweig. So this is the pattern by Caitlin Hunter of Boiler Knitworks and I am doing this sweater out of a skein of um, Fruvalborg, I think it's Borderline is the shade colour. Have I still got the tag here? Yes, I have. So this is Fruvalborg, but I bought this at um, the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So it, uh, this is the, what's the word? The logo for Fruvalborg when she trades out of Stephen and Penelope. So her own logo is slightly different. But um, yeah, it is the borderline merino swirl, 80% merino, superwash, 20% nylon, and it is a high twist. And then the contrast colour, or the main colour rather, is this, which I have dyed myself. Again, a merino nylon mix, high twist to match the yarn base of the, the borderline skein. And um, yeah, they're working really well together, I think. A nice spring colour, even though these are quite dark autumnal colours, I wanted something of a quite a dramatic um, contrast. And I think I've achieved that. So this is how it is working up. I've just finished, let me get my this around the right way. I've just finished the, um, the lace yoke and yeah. I'm really, really pleased. Had to do some adaptation shenanigans with gauge and needle size and garment size, but I think that's gonna be quite a statement. And I think that's what I really like about this Vig, and I was saying this last week, that it really features, if you've got a, a, a skein of yarn that you really, really love and you want it featured, then a pattern like this where it's it's solid, contrast colour. There's no kind of interweaving particularly of the main colour other than as you lead in and lead out of that lace section. It gives you opportunity to, to feature those those one skein of dreams that we have. If you're like me I kind of get completely absorbed by a single skein and then not entirely sure of where I'm going to use it so this is this is a perfect project for that really. Um, yeah so I've just come out of the lace section and I've got some uh, two by two rib in two different colours as I come down now for a little bit but I need to keep an eye on my gauge where the rows are concerned because I've gone down needle size and up a garment size that's fine for the sort of width but I just need to keep an eye that um, this section is as long as it's supposed to be after the the specific rows I think there is a um, a a size measurement like you have to knit to like however many stitches 12 stitch uh, 12 stitches you have to knit to uh, 12 inches for example before you split for the, the sleeves so i might need to do a little bit more of the main color before i divide up for the sleeves but that's okay that is <gasps> dropped a stitch oh my goodness one second it's um, yeah, so that's the only thing I need to keep an eye on really. And then sleeve length, etc., shouldn't be too much of a problem um, because they are measured rather than just gone by row counts. So yes, oh, I've done it again. I need to change to a larger cord really. That would make more sense. So that's, I've been pretty monogamous with my knitting, to be honest. That's the only thing that I sort of had on the go. I finished my socks last week, um, have been musing about what sock pattern to try next out of my 52 weeks of socks book. So I think I've chosen, but I haven't kind of um, gone into my stash yet to find the skein of yarn that I want to use for that. Um, 
so yeah that's that's pretty much all the the knitting i've had on the go like i say i've been sticking to that project because i know that once next week starts my brain will get full again and uh, i do need to kind of keep an eye on the lace pattern row by row so i'm glad that i'm the other side of that now and there's a lot of stocking stitch knitting to continue with when i get back to work um so yeah that's sort of all of the knittingy bits um spinning so i've done quite a bit of spinning as i think i mentioned last week or the week before or podcast before um i am spinning for the sneffled shawl by fiber tails and it's a really interesting construction it's knit in the round it's a color work um pattern to knit in the round and then you steek it to create a triangle shape so I'm kind of I'm supposed to be knitting this along with um, Becky from Back to Blighty who is way way ahead of me so I do apologize Becky but I am getting there I promise so I've sort of worked out my um, my main colors and I'm doing it in natural shades for the main colors so I have spun up the three natural shades I want to be using I think it there's, it uses more of the, the darker colour. So this is Black Jacob and then the White Jacob gets featured and then there's a grey in there as well. I'll pop a little picture in if I can uh, find one so you can see the kind of construction. So this grey one is Norwegian. Uh, these two are Jacob and this is Norwegian, all from the Fibre Hut. And this Norwegian is really, really interesting. This is the fibre. And it is very unruly. It's kind of really, really spiky, but not coarse. Uh, it seems to have quite a lot of guard hairs that stick out, but they're not they're not scratchy at all. And when it was on the bobbin, I was feeling it and thinking, mm, oh gosh, I think that might be a bit scratchy because it's going to be around my neck. But now it's skeined up, and these haven't had a a bath yet, so they'll they'll fluff up again once I've kind of uh, soaked them. Um, but it feels lovely and soft again in the skein so yeah I'm intrigued about this because I think it is so poofy that I think it's going to be super super warm so I haven't, I've never spun Norwegian before that's that's just the name it was called um, so that'll be really interesting to see how they all work together so those are my three colors and then there are um, little flashes of buds of, of color now what I'm hoping to use for that is this glorious, it's a kind of a deep orangey red with these flashes of yellow, these little neps in it, um, you can't quite see. And this was a lovely gift to me from Julia from the Happy Knitting Podcast. So thank you so much, Julia. She sent it along to me a little while ago and I've got loads of it. It's super, super soft. I'm not sure of the fibre content but there must be some merino in there maybe even some silk because it's got a real sheen to it uh, so I think that'll be really interesting for these kind of flashes of color I think that'll work quite well with these these darker shades and give that sense of they look like buds as I say like flowers or little trees or whatever in the pattern so don't know what that's going to spin up like because it's got it's not an art yarn it's not an art fiber but it has got different textures in it so It'll be interesting to see how that manages itself, how it manages itself, how I manage it on the wheel to make um, to make some yarn to go along with these three. So that'll be uh, my next little project on the spinning wheel, I think. I will get to it soon, I promise. Um, so those are the things I've kind of completed. And then I was sent a couple of, oh, about a month ago now, probably. <gasps> Gosh, time flies, doesn't it? I was sent some yarn by the Fibre Hut as a gift um, to have a little play with, have a review of. So this is the um, Moorland range of their Fibre Fusions. Um, and this is the colour, I think it was called, was it called da, 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 da. I can't remember, I'll pop it below. Um, but yeah, this glorious kind of pinky red colour and it's Shetland, Shetland Moorit, and um, silk so you can really see 
those little flashes of the dark red silk in there and you can see the grey Shetland and I actually had some grey Shetland in stock anyway so I just wanted to see how that kind of what the base was like in its pure form and it's so fluffy to spin it is a really it, it goes really really quick really really beautifully it kind of slides along um, as you're spinning it up and then but it took me a little while to, to work out how to do it I'm normally a short forwards uh, spinner but it didn't seem to like that it was kind of breaking quite quickly because it just wanted to push forwards so I ended up doing more of um, a, a backwards draw maybe a, a short backwards draw that seemed to be more um, able to control it so yes so it took me a while to kind of work out what it needed um, and I two plied it together and this is how it's come up and I was spinning this in sunshine is it gonna focus and the silk was really really sparkling in the Sun so that's it as a two ply and you can see that depth of grey uh, so it's it's like a dusty rose sort of colour. Um, very, very soft, very, very fluffy. It's had a soak, it's had a dry, and it's just... Yeah, I'd be really interested to see how that, that knits up. It's incredibly soft. The Shetland is really lovely. I haven't worked with, with Shetland before either. I'd had it tucked away in my stash um, to use on the blending board, really. Um, so what I thought I'd would do then is spin up some Shetland on its own and then barber pole it with some of the red so you can see that difference there there's a really um, the flashes of red then against the grey I think work really really nicely um, and now my battery is going to go I'm just going to change my battery one second yes what was I saying yes barber pole so I spun up some Shetland on its own and then barber polled it with the single of the Moorland shade, uh, the Moorland fibre. Um, yeah, and I think that works really nicely as well. So together they create a nice little combo, a nice little pair. So yes, absolutely recommend. Very soft, very lovely. The preparation is beautiful as always. Um, but like I say, the disclaimer is that was a gift uh, to me from Gay from the Fibre Hut to have a little play with. And I think what I'm going to do with some of this is um, add it to the blending board maybe uh, and see what else I can kind of blend with it in terms of colours and fibres. I've got some Zwartbles, Zwarblers, but those ones, that might be nice in there, but a bit dramatic in there. They're quite dark, those those um, fibres I have. So see how that works together. Um, yeah, what am I going to do with this? I had a lovely message from somebody saying, oh, that looks nice fibre, what are you going to do with it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking about a pair of mittens, actually. I, I know it seems foolish at the moment, but we did go out for a bike ride the other day, and, man, my fingers were freezing. Um... So yeah, maybe, maybe a little pair of mittens. Don't know, don't know. So yeah, in terms of fibre, is that everything? I think so. It is an unholy mess down here. But yeah, that's kind of all the spinning um, I've been doing, knitting I've been doing. Um, so now it's sort of life and kitchen stuff, really. So I'll put a little link in here if anybody wants some more fibre stuff. But if you're saying for the chatter, what have we been up to? I'm guzzling coffee like no one's business this morning. I've ha I've not had caffeine properly for probably about four or five months. Occasionally, if I need a little bit of a lift. Um, and my husband was making coffee this morning and forgot what kind of non-caffeine thing. Made caffeinated. And yeah, I'm I'm definitely on a roll this morning. So, uh, but I do feel a bit flushed. It's weird, isn't it, when you go back to caffeine after not having it for a while? Um, yes, and obviously it creates tangents as well. Uh, so, what have we been up to? Um, kitchen. Let's let's get to the the good stuff. Uh. <laughs> So yes, as you know, kitchen is finished and I've got a little video for you that we shot this morning in the kitchen um, and I just wanted to kind of say why we changed the kitchen. So we moved to this house about 20 years ago. It is a um, Victorian terraced house, so they're sort of long and thin with quite small rooms, which means that some rooms can be quite dark 
Um, so at the back of the house, which is where the dining room and the kitchen was, and I've got an old photo, I'll pop one in there so you can kind of see. Um, and it was great, it's a lovely, quite a large dining room, but always kind of felt quite dark and cold. We had real problems with damp in the external wall. Um, and the kitchen was always really cold and there was damp starting to come in the back wall. Uh, so we knew it was time for a change, but we just couldn't gather the funds really together to kind of do it. Anyway, finally, after about six years of planning and waiting and saving and then having to spend money on other things as, as these things happen, we finally managed to kind of get some funds together to be able to, to do it, to commit to do it. Um, so yes, so we swap things around. So the dining room has become the kitchen and the kitchen has become the dining room. We've taken a wall down between those two rooms, which means that there's lots more light in there now. We've changed the access point. So the external door has been shifted. Uh, so you, you kind of see from the front door all the way through the house now to the back door through the kitchen. Um, and it's really, really made a massive difference because the room was so cold uh, because of the damp and because of the, the, the no natural light in there really. Uh, it just had kind of got colder and colder and more and more miserable. And there were times when we had to sit at the table in our coats because there just was no heat being absorbed. Um, kept in that back room and then when we took all the plaster down and I say we when the builders took all the plaster down and took everything away what we found was that there was no insulation on those external walls so no wonder it was always cold and no wonder with the damp as well that there were there were issues there so it has completely transformed that space and has meant that we already spend so much more time in that room there are there are days where we don't really go into our living room uh, because we are living in the kitchen diner. It's a much more sociable space. It's a much more comfortable space. It's a much more grown up space. We keep saying, oh, we feel like proper grown ups. Um, <laughs> there's so much though that my husband said the other day. Do you think the front room is sad now we don't go in there as much? So um, yeah, we feel like we're neglecting our front room now. But now of course, the, when you ever if you've ever kind of been in that situation where you have had some work done or, or redecorated the rest of the house then looks like a sorry mess really so now we're like oh my gosh well this room needs doing and now the hall and stairs and landing needs doing from all the dirt and the dust and we need a new carpet and we need i feel like we have picked at a couple of uh, dropped stitches and everything is unraveling now but still we can shut the kitchen door and sit quietly in there. So here is a little bit of a, a video of our transformation. It's nothing massive really, but it has absolutely transformed our lives and the way we live in our house. <laughs> so here we are. The kitchen is done. It is complete, thank goodness. So I thought I'd take you on a little tour. So as you can see, if you go down there, so the dining room is at the far end, kitchen room, kitchen is up here so it used to be the other way around that's the point you see so this used to be the dining area this was a wall here door there so now we've moved to the dining area being where the kitchen was which is a much better way of it working we think um, so this is where our sink used to be. So you're coming really close. <laughs> this is very dark. <laughs> this is where our sink used to be. So therefore we had the door fitted there so we could go straight out into the garden. That's where the door used to be, over there. So that's now window. Kieran's favourite window. That's Kieran's favourite window. My favourite window. <laughs> um, yeah, and we have this big dresser that was here when we bought the house 20 years ago and it was from an old school, an old primary school in this area of Cardiff, but that obviously was in the dining room and it's quite oppressive and quite dark. Um, so with the extra windows, it's uh, not the extra windows, but with taking the wall down, it has lightened the space up so, so much. So yes, 
we are able to cook on our fancy new cooker, which is very exciting. Um, two ovens. Oh, the dream. I know. That was quite, quite exciting. Um, and what else to say, really? It sort of changed our lives. We never used to sit in the dining room before. Uh, as much as we tried, it was cold and it was dark and it was a damp space. And now here we are. Not very um, massive, but very, very uh, cherished. Really, really lovely space. Oh, and with... Come here, come here. So with getting everything out of storage, etc., trying to decide what stays and what goes. So yeah, so this row of stuff is wedding presents that we had. Not not that Avocados, of course, they were a recent purchase, but these are the wedding, some of the wedding gifts that we had. And these are some wedding gifts that my mum had, so we are now repurposing those and making sure that we're using them. Um, yeah, still gaps to fill. Not with, with books. books. Not um, with books, no. Not with books. What about under the stairs? Oh, yes. Oh, let me take you to our little pantry. I'll, I'll cut this down. Okay. Yeah. So look. Oh, this is a, a cupboard just a cupboard, you think. Mm -mm. One second. Open it up and put the light on. Go and see, Kira. Oh, I know what it looks like. <laughs> Making use of under the stairs. Fabulous. Yeah. So that's the dishwasher. Yeah, we've got a dishwasher now and everything. <laughs> so that's it. Very exciting times for us. Um, yeah. Back to the podcast. So, yeah, there you go. All done and dusted. Still some gaps for bits and bobs, not books. There are enough books in this house. Uh, I know you can never have enough books, but we, we really do have enough books. Every room is crammed with books in this house. Um, this is my knitting corner. That's about as much room as I get allocated. Um, yes, yeah, so what else to tell you really? Um, had a few days off work, which has been absolutely glorious. Um, back to work on Tuesday, it's now Saturday, so still got a couple of days, but already kind of feeling that, oh gosh, what am I going back to? Back on campus after the Easter break, so um, I've got another week of working at home and then I'm back on campus. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to kind of be back and see the students in real life, that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, the push towards the end of term really, a lot of work to do, a lot of work to be done. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. We shall get there. And the weather is so much nicer now. It feels like spring is in the air and it kind of lifts the spirits. We in the UK are starting to come out of lockdown. I think non-essential shops are opening from Monday. Um, so cautious optimism. I've had my first jab. I don't know if I said that last week, but yeah, I had my first instalment of my vaccine, which I'm incredibly grateful for. I was fine, no ill effects, a sore arm, but that was about it. Um, so yes, yeah, so I kind of feel like I am uh, a little bit more secure about going back teaching face to face really, just having had that one jab. Um, don't know when I'll get my second one, but we shall see. Kieran's got his on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, my dad who lives in France and my stepmom, they've just had their first jab as well. So that's great because um, I know things are quite difficult in terms of um, vaccinations and numbers in Europe. Um, luckily they're in quite, um, a remote part of France so they, they nothing has really changed for them in terms of what they get up to and where they can go uh, but still good to know that they have had a little a, the first step of their vaccination journey as well so I hope that wherever you are you are keeping safe you are keeping well and um, yes your knitting spinning crochet dyeing is keeping you company keeping you out of mischief and uh, yeah, I will catch up with you in a couple of weeks. Take care all. Thank you so much for joining me as ever and um, I shall see you soon. Dior Pau, Bye.